color and design for mobiles. So I just thought I'd make a little video to explain how I use these files that I've got here to download for you. So you can download them here. This will look different because I will replace this video with the one I'm recording at the moment. Or here. So let's click on that. That gets you to my Google Drive folder where you can download all the designs. Now for the iPad you only need one, two and three. This number four is completely white and that is for printing out and using real life media such as color pencil or paints. So let's start with number one. Click on the three little dots then open in and because I use Procreate a lot, this is in my very first row of apps. If that's not the case from, for you, you might have to look a bit further, where you can go here and then more, and it might be in the app list here. So just check. For now I'll just put it in Procreate. All right. So now if we go to Procreate, you'll see that the mobiles are actually there, the files are there. Number 1, Transparent, 2 and 3. So we'll start with the easiest one, which is this number 2. Just notice quickly, now it doesn't do it anymore, um, it shows as a transparent file here, like you can still see it here, it shows transparent here. But when you come in here, it's got a background. So all you have to do is click that off to get the same view. So we go back and we'll start with number two, transparent mobile. And for now, I'll just untick the background color so we only see the mobile, the blank of a mobile. So the next thing you do is tap on the plus icon and then drag that layer underneath. This layer here, I might rename it just to make it easier to see, we'll call it mask, because that's all it's doing. While well, this is going to be our painting layer, and all we'll see, we can do whatever we like on there, but the mask will cover what we don't want to see. So let's start with a color. Um, start with a brush. Let's use a brush that's actually with oh, this fresco, that's a nice brush. That's actually in Procreate when you buy it. I've got a lot of brushes in here that I've bought, so um, if, you, if you see me use a brush you haven't got, that's probably the reason. But just look around and there'll be lots of things for you to play with. So I'll have that background on, otherwise we can't see what we're doing. So just quickly to note, I'm using an Apple Pencil on an iPad Pro. And this pencil, if you tap it, it goes to uh, Eraser. And if you tap it again, it goes to Brush. This needs to be set up in the settings, which I've done obviously. But um, if that doesn't work for you, then that's why. And if you don't have an Apple Pencil, you can do all this by, by finger as well. But then you have to use the sliders to change the size of the brush as well as the opacity. So if you do it by hand, you need to set the opacity fairly low. And just play with your brush sizes. With the Apple Pencil, I can adjust all that just by the pressure I apply. Of course, now I've got that set to low opacity and I can't play with my pressures. I'll keep it a little bit lower. I'm a bit heavy handed at times. So I want a dagger towards the stem. So I'll concentrate there first. Then make it a bit lighter towards the outside. If you're working on low opacity, if you go over it again, you'll increase the strength of your color. So that's that. 
You can also change colors just by picking it up. Hold your finger there and it will pick up um, the, the color that's there. So you can use the white to just go back in where you don't want it. And then use the blue again. Oops. Use the blue again where you take out too much. This is just a matter of playing, really. I get a bit obsessive for that. Okay, I want a bit more white in this one. And in that one. And I want that set a little bit bigger. Whoops, what happened there? I must have tapped it. So that's all right. You can go back in your color palette and it will save what colors you've been using. Although I don't think that looks very accurate here, that, that, that history. I'm not sure. I'll just pick it up here. You need to be careful where you pick up. It's that little crosshair that does the picking up. Yeah, I want that a bit darker. So, we'll just make it a bit darker. And now we're going to do these little accent pieces, for which I will use... This is my normal palette. I might try this rust color. I want to change my brush for this painting or oh, airbrushing. We'll use airbrushing and we'll use the hard airbrush they'll do. Increase that size a bit. It's still an airbrush. You can see how it does a very gentle job initially. But if you apply some pressure it will be solid color. So you can play with that a bit. I think that might need to be a bit more orange for me. I always like my um, accent pieces to be bright. Oops, that's too big. Just for here. Still coloring outside the lines. You could erase all that blue, but this orange is nice and solid, it'll cover it. But with some of the brushes that are not solid, you might have to erase what's underneath. So that's that one. These could be brighter still, but I'm not too fast. So once this one is done, you could decide to do another one. Switch that one off, and then work on this layer. Let's make this one, uh, I'll do this one really quickly. Um, if you go into the recent brushes, you'll see what you've used last. So I'll go back to this fresco. And just quickly give it a bit of color. Just to show you how to... And then the, I'll make these. A bit more towards turquoise, and I'll use my hair brush and do these little ones. They could be a little bit bigger. I very often use my accent colors to be complementary to the to the ones in the mobile itself. So for this 
That history doesn't work very well. It doesn't even show that turquoise. There's a few bugs in here at the moment, I think. It must be due for another update. So there we go. So that's that one. So now we've got two different ones. And depending on what you've got selected, you can see which one you like best. So before, like, in some, with some mobiles, if it's a complicated big mobile, I might do five or six of these and just go through the colors to see which one I prefer before I start printing my papers. So that's that one. Now let's have a look at this transparent background. This one is a bit more complicated. Uh, but the nice thing with this particular uh, file is that you can put a background in it. Most of the things I've shown you so far you can do in most painting apps. But I'm not sure whether this uh, next one will work in all apps. So start by opening up the line. Take out the background. Click on the layer. Then copy. Then go back. And open the number 3. And then when you go to that little range icon. Go to paste. And it will paste the line on top of the other uh, image that's there. So I'll call this line so we won't get confused. And I'll call this mobile. I'm just thinking I'm going to take these, um, this lettering away because they'll be annoying. And that's on both of these layers. So now, above the mobile layer, we want a working layer. So you go to the plus icon, and this will be our working layer. So you click on that, then go here to Clipping Mask. Tap that, and you'll see a little arrow that refers to the layer underneath it. So once you start painting on this, it will only affect the areas that have paint on it, or solid areas already, not the transparent areas at all. Which is why this is a PNG file. So if I take away the background, you'll see what's left. Okay, so we pick our color. What have we got here? Ah, oh, that's a nice, unusual color. And we'll go to that fresco brush, which is set. And we'll just start painting. Nice dull color. It's actually a nice gray, this. Sort of a... Um, a green bias to it. So let's say that this is what we want. We'll go back with some white where we've overdone it. Just reduce that a bit. Keep that under control. Anyhow, I don't have to fuss too much. So now we go back to that green again. A little bit more here bit on the weight. That will do. And the same thing again. I think I might need a yellow here. Orangey yellow. Not that orange. And I'm going to my hard airbrush. This hard airbrush, that's the one I made myself. And we'll put that on here. And I know this is a very solid brush, so that will cover things. So in effect, it looks like it's the same as the file we used before. And it actually acts the same as, this, as that file. But what it's doing is coloring only where the solid areas are. And this is also why we've got that line layer on top. I'll just increase the zoom here so you can see what happens. If I turn that off, you'll see here that it's affecting all the solid areas, including the wire. Well, if you've got the wire on, it keeps that a little bit crisper, which is what I like. Now, you can also put in a image at the back of this. But to do that, you'll have to group these first, so you can uh, scale it in one unit. 
And to do that, tap on the layer, on the, not on the bottom layer, but the uh, uh, working layer, and then click on Combine Down. You've now created a group. And then you can dra drag the line in it as well. And that now becomes a group. And when you go to the uh, Transform button here, the whole group will transform in one. So you don't have to uh, play with any settings. Which means that now you've got an area at the back of this where you can insert a photo of the site where you think the mobile is going to be. So go to your little range icon, go to insert a photo, which will go to your camera roll. And I've got one upright and one yeah, that's the right one. This photo hasn't been optimized, so it's looking a bit uh, dull and boring. We'll call that OK. I don't know whether you can actually make this brightness. You can. I don't usually do that in here. Brightness, it doesn't do contrast, so that's probably why I don't do it in here. <coughs> so when you go to your Layers palette, drag this underneath your mobile group. And there's your mobile in the place where you want it to hang. So from here you can place it there. Should have picked a darker color so you can see what's happening. From here you can also change the size. And there you've got it. This can be really nice if you sell mobiles. You can actually have a shot from the area where the people are going to hang it and then design the mobile with the colors they would like or that you think uh, would go nice in that space and then share the design so they can see what you're planning to do. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you. We've covered that and we've covered that. Um, it doesn't matter the shape or the size of the mobile I make, like I could make a mo mobile twice that size, I will still use this file to do the color work. I've got two, I've got this one as well. And that's the other one I use, that's the one with the vertical, more vertical veins. They're the two types I make most. If I started making another mobile that was different again, I would probably make um, some artwork for it. But at this stage, this is enough for me. Okay, I hope you can uh, follow along with this. You can always rewind. If you're new to Procreate and it's all a bit confusing, what I usually do is play it on one device while I work on the other. Well, good luck. If you have any problems, see me in the Facebook page and I'll try and help you out there. Okay.